Hello friends, Ramadan is here. I am a host for Team Blood and this is my chaotic month long vlog trying to mood read my way through Ramadan. I'm not gonna lie, I hit a few slumps along the way. So I hope that you enjoy this very chaotic month long readathon vlog. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and today I am hosting, I'm hosting a 24 hour readathon on my Patreon and it is Realmathon themed, but basically I'm using a spinner wheel. On that spinner wheel, there are some numbers and those numbers correspond with a video that you get to open where I pull a prompt out of a jar for you. So all of my patrons can choose to either spin the wheel and watch the prompts or they can watch all of the prompts and kind of choose whatever they want. So I'm actually going to do my first spin right now and pick my book and then I'm gonna walk to Target because I live near a Target and I'm gonna get some snacks for today because I am for the first time trying to sprint till like midnight. Although the majority of people who come to my sprints are on the East Coast. So midnight for them is nine o'clock for me and I'm like, should I just stop at nine o'clock? <laughs> I'll probably keep going though. But anyway, I'm gonna do my first spin and see what prompt I get. Okay, I have my spinner wheel, although it is called a picker wheel. <laughs> I have it up, I'm screen recording, so let's do our first spin. It's prompt number five. Okay, so we got prompt number five. I think I remember what prompt this is, but let's go watch it. Okay, so prompt number five is a new to me author and I immediately know I immediately know what I want to read, okay? I immediately knew! This is perfect. This couldn't be any more perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Done and dusted. I'm so excited. The third cover just got revealed. I don't know if this is gonna be a trilogy or not, but all of these covers are just gorgeous. They're gorgeous, gorgeous girls. So Done and Dusted is supposed to be a small town cowboy yeehaw romance. I am so excited to start the readathon off with something I think is gonna be really, really fun and that I can fly through. I am notorious for when I'm hosting a readathon, I get through nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. So I'm trying to not be that way this time around. Hello, I'm gonna give you a little Target haul. It's just snacks. I didn't get anything. And that's strategic because I said to myself, if I walk to Target, because it's very close, I have no excuse not to walk. I thought that if I didn't walk, then I would be much less likely to get myself a little treat that I couldn't carry, you know? So anyway, I ended up getting a barbecue chicken pizza. This is the California Pizza Kitchen. I like California Pizza Kitchen. I don't know, this was the one that looked the best. And then I got two of the lemon lime lo lolly, lemon lime olipops. I love olipop, but I only like three flavors and it's this one, this is my number one flavor. I like the strawberry vanilla and I like the tropical punch. Although the orange one, like it's good, but sometimes I just am not in the mood for it. I'm also not somebody who like guzzles down orange juice or anything like that, so orange most things like i like them but i don't love them lemon lime though love it i'm not saying it tastes exactly like a sprite or anything like that but it does fulfill that craving for me for soda so i drink these are they good for me i don't know i then got some grapes i got the cotton candy grapes i love these some strawberries some raspberries and in my fridge i have some blackberries so i'm gonna make a little fruit medley Fruit salad, if you will. I also am gonna have a salad with my pizza, but I already had the ingredients for a salad. And then, okay, you guys are gonna make fun of me, I'm pretty sure, but this is like my new obsession. I found these the other day, and I don't know why they're so good to me, but it's probably because I love like buffalo sauce a lot. But these red hot goldfish, why are they so good to me? I don't know, they're so delicious. It's so delicious that I got two. So those are my snacks. I do have some other like, snacky things already in my house because if you know anything about me, which I don't really know why you would know this, maybe I've said it before, I'm a snacker. I can skip a full meal and just snack all day and be happy, even though that's not very good for me probably. So I'm trying not to do that today. I'm trying to be a little bit balanced, just a tiny bit. In the meantime, because it's only 10 o'clock, I am gonna film a video and try to edit it before sprint start and then sprint start at three and I'm gonna try to go till midnight like I said.
Sprints are about to start in like 30 minutes. I made my pizza. I'm about to stuff my face and I have like so much fruit. I made a huge fruit bowl. I have my goldfish on hand. I do have a Coke as well. I have a Coke that I got yesterday. I have all my Olipops. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to sprint till midnight. I've never done this because I'm a baby. I'm a weak baby. <laughs> Hello friends, we meet here again another day where I'm sprinting in bed because I can't sit in that office chair for much longer. I've been sprinting for five hours. Um, Sid and Jan are on sprints with me. It's been really fun. And I am almost done with Done and Dusted. I just hit myself in the head. I'm almost done with Done and Dusted and I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I did trust in the people who said I would enjoy it, but I didn't expect that it would give me like five star feels. There's some ADHD representation in here and it's been really great to see and read about and there's also like a rehabilitation plot line kind of going on which I wasn't expecting. The number one thing I talk about with contemporary romances is that I love when a character is kind of going through a healing process. Absolutely love that and on top of that this is small town yeehaw moment but not only that our main character Clementine who they call Emmy for the most part in this book is a writer. She's like a horse rider and trainer and she's done it professionally for many years. So she's been on the road for years and years and years living in all types of different towns. And she has a situation that happens um, that we don't really know about that's forcing her to kind of move back home. But she hasn't really told anybody that she's actually permanently moving back home. She's kind of telling them that she's here to visit and it's slowly being revealed that she's likely just gonna be moving back home. And I also love small town romance where the person moved away for a time and then is coming back and they fall in love with somebody. And this is the brother's best friend trope. Didn't know if I liked that because I have a brother and I would never date any of his friends. So I didn't know if I liked that, but it's working for me in here. It's really working for me in here. I also wanted to update you that the fruit bowl, the egregiously huge fruit bowl is still alive and well. And I have been eating at this like all evening and it just doesn't go down. It's like one of those things that keeps refilling itself. So that's me. <laughs> Hello, good morning. It's like eight o'clock right now. And I ended up sprinting until 1130, I think, or something like that. I wanted to go till midnight, but I started getting a really bad headache, which happens whenever I'm looking at computers for too long. I'm very prone to migraines because of that. But we do have sprints at 11 today to close out the readathons. Anyway, I am very proud of myself because whenever I host 24 hour readathons or even 48 hour readathons, I don't really get a lot of reading done. I don't know if it's the pressure of the readathon because readathons oftentimes are very counterintuitive for me. I'm learning. I always think like, oh, this is gonna be so motivating and then it's not. It's absolutely not. But this time around, I actually felt extremely motivated to read and I finished a book. I finished Done and Dusted. I loved it. Also, I wanted to say sprints were so fun. The fact that people stuck around for the majority of the sprints and then Jan and Sid were on with me for the majority of the time. Like Jan ended up lasting till the very end as well. Just iconic, iconic behavior. I had so much fun. <laughs> and then to top it off, finishing a book and loving it, I am giving this a solid four stars. I had so much fun. And apparently I do like the brother's best friend trope. Didn't think that was a thing that I would like, but I actually really liked it in here. I really love this couple. I know yesterday, I was talking a lot about Clementine when I was talking about this book and I didn't really get to talk about Luke very much but I also very much enjoyed Luke because Luke has sort of a sordid past with his family. He ended up moving out of his mother and stepfather's house when he was like a teenager and living with Clementine's family because Luke is obviously best friends with Clementine's brother. He pretty much views their family as his and it was really sweet to see how much he loves their family but also you get to see this arc of him kind of 
reconciling with his feelings about his family and his mother and not wanting to be like his father because the reason he had a stepdad was his real dad just couldn't step up to the plate and be a father, but he lived around the town and people kind of saw him messing up in life. And so Luke is very scared that he's gonna be like that. And he decided once his best friend Gus, which is Clementine's brother, kind of stepped up and became a father and was really doing something with his life that he needed to do the same. So he ended up becoming an owner of this bar and he also gives horse riding lessons. And so he's doing a lot with his life and he's really getting his life together. But Clementine knows him as the guy who was just sleeping with whoever, who didn't really have his shit together. And she hasn't really been home as often to see this change within him. So it's fun to see him like kind of proving himself to her and continuously surprising her with the changes that he's made in his life and how much she actually really adores him and how much he adores her. I loved it, ate it up, four out of five stars. The third one comes out in November. The second one just came out like last week or something like that. And then I know there's gonna be a fourth one because I read the author's note and she said that this was gonna be a four book series. Also in the author's note, she said that this story and this setting is very much based on her own experiences growing up. And I just love that. Highly recommend this if you're looking for a little small town yeehaw moment of a romance. And if you wanna fall in love with Clementine and Luke, because I really think that you will. That being said, I did spin earlier. I ended up spinning before I was ready to be on camera, okay? I looked haggard. I got prompt number eight, and prompt number eight was a Cassidy fave, and I just saw her video drop earlier today, but in that video, she actually has a new fave, and it's called The Bloodstone, I think, and this is, like, worth 65 points or something like that. It also will count, technically, for new-to-me author and new-to-my TBR, because I literally just used one of my credits to get the audiobook, although so it is on Hoopla. So if you are interested in it, it is on Hoopla. Hi, things have changed. I was listening to The Bloodstones and I'm liking it, but my brain just isn't processing today, apparently. I think I'm just tired and it's put me in a weird mood. This is like a theme apparently. So I did another spin, right? And I landed on, I think it was prompt five and the prompt that was pulled for prompt five was a related team word. So I know this is a Tempest of Tea. The actual series name has blood in it. It's called Blood and Tea. And that makes sense because there's supposed to be vampires in this. So I'm going to start this because I actually do have to read it this month, my book club pick. And it's been kind of calling to me. I did want to read it closer to when the book club is happening, but I've been in such a weird reading place for the last couple of weeks that I'm just gonna start this because I want to. So yeah, I used my one respin and we're gonna, we're gonna try this out. friends, I feel like I'm in such a weird reading place right now, which I don't know if it's because of the readathon, like me putting pressure on myself to read things to get points, or if it's really the book. But I've been reading The Tempest of Tea, A Tempest of Tea, it's not The Tempest of Tea, and I am pretty much halfway through it. And the thing is, I'm enjoying the writing enough. I like the characters enough, but I think I don't like a heist. I'm kind of learning this about myself. I don't know if I like a heist. So technically a DNF does count if you get 50% or more into the book and DNF it. So I think right now I am gonna just DNF it. I'm gonna put it down and maybe I'll come back to it at the beginning of next month. I do technically have a live show for this on my Patreon, but I know a couple of my patrons really wanted some more time with it. So I think we'll wait till next month to discuss it, especially being a new release. I wanna give them as much time as possible since I know it's harder to get a hold of at the library and stuff like that. So we're gonna push off the live show and so I think I'm gonna just pick this up at the beginning of April. I'm gonna give you the barest 
of bones of a synopsis of this because it is literally going in one ear and out the other. That's the issue that I'm having with retaining it. Primarily in the beginning, you are following Arthi and Jin and they own this tea shop. During the day, the tea shop is a normal tea shop in Europe. And then at night, it serves blood to vampires. What you quickly learn is that this is illegal. So having an establishment that serves blood to vampires is illegal and they hide it. So the book opens up where they're confronting a patron who comes into the tea shop and he's sort of telling them that he is the one that gave away their front. And in the midst of that confrontation, they realize that the police are going to their tea shop to raid them. So they rush back. You see them be able to flip it back into a normal tea shop in like no time flat. And they realize that something has to give because this person is clearly blackmailing them and they don't really know why. So this leads to a kind of heist situation. There's actually quite a few conversations happening about colonialism and about Europeans taking artifacts and putting them in their museums without permission and stealing back those artifacts. That's part of what this heist is going to be about, but there's also talking about the immigrant experience and the racism that these characters are experiencing. So I do enjoy those conversations. I'm enjoying the writing and I like the characters fine enough. There's just something about all of it together that's like going in one ear and out the other. And I truly just think it's the fact that I'm pressuring myself to get through books. So I'm going to pick up something that I really want to read. I just don't know what that is yet. So stay tuned because I need to pick up something that I'm like super interested and super excited about. And I just am not sure what that is right now. Cause baby love to like do my hair and get changed before I leave. But I've been listening to an audiobook and this came about because yesterday on Sunday, the roomies, Jared and myself went to see Dune 2. And I loved the first movie, like really loved it. I've seen it a few times. I wish I could see it in movie theaters again because that experience was like unmatched. I watched Dune 2 yesterday and I said, fine, I'm reading it. I'm reading it. Okay, and I am 100 pages in, which looks like nothing, but it's great so far. I've been hybrid reading it for the most part, but then more recently we're getting into the section where listening to the audiobook has been pretty easy to pay attention to without the book, and I'm enjoying it a lot. I never thought that I would like this book. And honestly, the reason I put this off and just didn't read it in November like I had planned is because I've been so afraid that I wouldn't like this book. I'm not the biggest sci-fi reader. Like I struggle with sci-fi a lot. I try really hard, but I do struggle with sci-fi. There are certain ones that I really, really enjoy. I know that I love cozy sci-fi, but something about modern sci-fi, like especially epic space odyssey type sci-fis haven't really been working for me that well. And maybe part of it is that I have a lot of the visuals for this since I've seen the movies already and I kind of know where it's going and I understand the politics based off seeing the movies. And so far, 100 pages in, the movie follows the plot fairly closely. So maybe that's helping me, but I actually really like the writing in here a lot. I like 
the writing style. And this is such an interesting political situation that's happening because it's definitely not unlike anything that we've seen. And I'm curious if Frank Herbert is going to make an overarching statement about colonization because in so many ways, this is about colonization. They're trying to take over the spice industry because Arrakis, the planet that this is taking place on, has this spice, spice melange. And there are so many different key players here that are trying to take control of the production of the spice. And our main character, Paul, and his family are now the Duke of Arrakis, and they are the ones that are kind of in control of spice production at this point in time. But there's a lot of political maneuvering in the background because there are a lot of figures wanting to take control so that they have a monopoly on this production. And so far, the Harkonnens, which they're this like, I feel they're an alien race. I don't know, when I've watched the movies, I also don't really understand who they are. They're from a different planet. And they previously had control over spice production and they ended up losing control because the Fremens, who are the actual people of Arrakis, were sabotaging them and sabotaging any production that was happening to the spice. So now Paul's family is coming into the picture. They've just moved to the planet and you're kind of seeing them acclimating, but also learning about the people, about this planet, about spice production. The other interesting thing is that Jessica, who is Paul's mom, she's what they call a Bene Gesserit. And from my understanding, by watching watching the movies and reading this book, Bene Gesserits are almost like revered holy type women and only women are Bene Gesserits. And so Jessica is a Bene Gesserit and she has kind of seen a future that could potentially happen. And this is something that the Bene Gesserits like have their truth seekers, but they also can see futures, like outlines of futures. I don't think it's clearly laid out for them, but they definitely can see possible futures or outcomes. Again, reading this is clearing up a lot of things that I think maybe I missed in the movie or aren't extremely well explained, but this has been clearing it up. But like I was saying, the writing is very approachable. Like it's very easy to read and get into. I'm excited to get further because my favorite parts of the movie happen a bit later in this book. And if anything, part two showed me that the second half of this book is going to be off the rails. <laughs> I'm just excited to be excited about a book. Also, this is quite a few points actually, because this has enough red on the cover to be considered 50%. There is a person on the cover. This is 600 pages. So this is a pretty heavy hitter and I'm excited that I'm actually enjoying it. And I think I can finish it fairly soon and still squeeze in a lot more reads. You say you're a vampire.
Hi friends, it's Friday and today is the start of Peace Talks, which is the 48 hour weekend readathon within Realmathon itself. And basically everything that you read during this weekend is an extra 10 points. So I'm about to get ready for the day and I'm not gonna lie to you, I am actually reading a couple books for the Peace Talks that are not gonna be in this vlog, but my goal is to read four books this weekend and so two of them will be for a different vlog and then two of them hopefully will be <laughs> for this vlog. I'm kind of hoping to read Swift and Saddle. I'm waiting for the audiobook at my library, but I did just go and pick up a copy of it because I really love Done and Dusted. So I think I want to try it again because Done and Dusted works so well for my 24 hour readathon. So I'm like, why not read Swift and Saddled? So if it does come in, I will end up reading it for this video. But yeah, there are going to be sprints all weekend long. So check them out if you haven't. Check them out. How are you going to check them out? It's past peace talk, Stephanie. literally came in last night. 10 minutes after finishing the book I was previously reading for Peace Talks, this audiobook came in through Libby and I was like, this is a sign. <laughs> so I picked it up and read it in one sitting. I loved this one. I actually think I liked it a little bit more than Done and Dusted. There's just something about, you know, people having depression and it being relatable. <laughs> So this is part of the Rebel Ranch series, the first one being Done and Dusted. I actually read Done and Dusted earlier in this vlog for my 48 hour readathon, 24 hour, it was a 24 hour readathon. And I think this one had just come out like a few days before I started Done and Dusted. So this follows Wes and Ada, and Ada is an interior designer from California, and she is coming to the ranch to renovate this space for one of Wes's dream projects. And Wes is actually the brother of Emmy, who's the main character in Done and Dusted, and he's the brother of Gus, who's gonna be the main character in the third Rebel Ranch novel, which I'm so excited for. That is probably my most highly anticipated book because I just love Teddy and Gus. Anyway, this isn't about Teddy and Gus. So yeah, Wes is their sibling and he kind of feels like he doesn't have anything going on in his life. Like he helps the family business, he helps around the ranch, but he's had this dream to renovate this space on the ranch and now it's finally coming true. But the fun part is this book starts off in the Devil's Boot and the Devil's Boot is also where Dun and Dusted starts off and Ava's just stopping in to get some food. And ends up kind of making eyes with Wes across the bar, not knowing that Wes is the guy that she's gonna be working for. They make out in a dark corner and then they get caught in the middle of making out and she's like, shit, I've gotta go. <laughs> And you kind of quickly find out she is divorced and she has a lot of trust issues with men. She has a lot of self doubt within herself and relationships and she's not really looking for anything serious. So the next morning after her spur of the moment decision to make out with a stranger in the corner, <laughs> she goes to the ranch to meet Wes, not knowing it's Wes. And she sees him and she's like, fuck, <laughs> what have I done? And he too is kind of like, damn, didn't mean to make out with my interior designer, but like, she's still cute. So they still embark on this project together. And the thing that I love about it was it's not as awkward as I thought it was gonna be. And I really love Wes and Ada together. I especially love Wes because he is someone who deals with depression and anxiety and he talks about it openly and he talks about how it affects his life. And I really related to that. I really related to his anxiety, but I also really related to Ada in so many ways, just because I feel like her and I have been through <laughs> similar things and have similar feelings. I do have to say, I think Wes really shined in this book, especially near the end. Ugh. I know the bar is in hell. He maybe, he maybe he rose it out of hell a little bit. And honestly, I can see Ada being somebody that's a frustrating character to read for different reasons, but I don't know. I just really appreciated that she genuinely was just trying to work through her distrust of men. But like, I really enjoyed how at every turn he proved her wrong. And instead of her pushing that away, she tried to grow from it. So I just, I just really loved this couple. I really loved Wes. I really loved the depression and anxiety discussions. And this one made me laugh a lot. I do think Done and Dusted made me laugh a lot. I can't really remember at this point now, but this one was making me giggle a lot. I have to say, if you love Elsie Silver, I think that you will love this series because these two series remind me of each other in the best ways possible, especially because there's a father figure in here. 
there's a father figure in here and it reminds me so much of the father figure in Chestnut Springs and I loved him. He was one of my favorite characters. I wish we could get a story about him, like an actual full-length novel about him falling in love because I would really die for that. I love an older romance, like imagine. Also, I'm never really someone to talk about the spicy scenes because I'm not a spicy scene girl. Like I like them fine enough, but it's not my thing, right? I don't give the little chili peppers, but these spicy scenes, I don't know, I was like, I was enjoying them, I will say. I was enjoying them. I'm not gonna lie to you, I really don't know what I wanna read next. I don't know what I'm even in the mood for at this point. Like I could read another romance and maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll put a poll up on Patreon or something and see if they pick for me. I don't really know what I'm gonna read. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I decided I was just gonna do a social media scroll because that's fun. That's fresh. So I'm gonna go on Goodreads, maybe Storygraph. It depends on what Goodreads has in store, but I'm gonna go on Goodreads, so good luck to me. Okay, so immediately we have Bride, which I have been in the middle of Bride for a while. I think I've been in the middle of Bride for like a month and a half, but I'm like 15% maybe into it, so it technically counts. I think we're gonna start Bride, or not start, finish Bride. I think it's just time. I've been complaining forever and ever and ever this month that I've been having trouble finishing books, so let's finish a book. Let's finish one that we have already started. Peace Talks just ended. I'm in bed because where else would I be? <laughs> I managed to squeeze and bride before Peace Talks ended and I ended up really liking this. It was fun. It was like a three stars, a solid three stars. I've never read an Allie Hazelwood before. I don't know after reading this if I would want to go pick up a contemporary book by her, but I would definitely try out another Omegaverse or if she was trying out some more fantasy romance because this was fun. It wasn't exactly Omegaverse, which shockingly it might be be shocking to people. I have read quite a bit of Omegaverse in my youth. <laughs> so this isn't quite Omegaverse. It's not quite what I expected, but I don't know why I expected anything more from Allie Hazelwood, not saying that she's not capable of it. I feel like going from contemporary romance and what I know about Allie Hazelwood to this, I don't really know why. I was expecting it to be more aligned with Omegaverse. There are definitely things that obviously align with the Omegaverse, but this is like Omegaverse light. But I did think the world building, I guess you could call it, was pretty interesting. Like the vampires were interesting, the werewolves were interesting. Like some of it was stuff that I've read before. Some of it was like a mashup of different lore and different things that I've seen in other Omegaverse books or books with vampires. I did think it was really fun that our main character Misery was marrying a werewolf and she's a vampire. And obviously there is that age old divide between the vampires and the werewolf. So obviously Misery being a vampire and Lo being a werewolf, they don't really like each other, but they have a marriage of convenience. I mean, in theory, this is supposed to be a political alliance, but Misery seems to have an ulterior motive for agreeing to this marriage. Also, Misery is one of those characters that is a bit of an outcast even among other vampires, so this also feels like an easy way for her to escape that ostracism that she seems to be facing. And this is single POV, so we don't really know that much about Lo. We only know like some diary entries that we get at the beginning of the book, which I genuinely thought that we were going to get a dual POV, but we didn't. I think I know the reason why we didn't, although I feel like the surprise, the twist, of it all was very obvious. But maybe that's because I've read so much like this before. I don't really know, but I thought it was very obvious. So I was really hoping we would get dual POV. This was a fun and fast read. It was really fun discussing it with some of my patrons in the Discord. So yeah, I mean, I don't have much to say about it because it's a three stars. And that's what's hard about rating books just an average three stars because it's like, I had fun, didn't hate it. It was just average. It was a good time. I'm glad that I read it. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> and on top of everything else, I got 10 extra points. So that is exciting. But now I'm gonna go to sleep for a really long time. I am just getting home from work. This is crooked. And I had a very weird day. It was emotionally taxing. <laughs> there was a lot happening. There was a lot happening. And I just need to chill the fuck out and read something, but I've conveniently lost the will to exist. <laughs> So I'm gonna have the prompt jar pick for me. That's kind of the theme this month, having other things pick for me because I have decision fatigue. <laughs> we have new school supplies, new to the TBR, which is plus two points. 
you can't even see it. Just trust me, it says new to the TBR. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Better, better, we're better. I, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna stretch this a tiny bit because I have the name of all things and this is technically new to my TBR because it's one of the books that I bought the most recently, like actually with my own money. I did buy this more recently in like a group of books that I bought all at the same time. That other book just fell. Anyway, I don't really wanna go look at it because I feel like the cover is gonna be bent. So my point was that I did buy this more recently, so it's technically new to my physical TBR. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this. I've already started it, um, not recently. I started it last month, but it's a slew of books that I'm actually in the middle of. You could say 15 books that I'm in the middle of, and why not knock one off the list, you know? So we're gonna start this. And I realized that I never updated y'all that I did start The Name of All Things and then I promptly started The Road of Bones, which is a Viking fantasy romance, which is also new to my TBR. If anything, it's newer to my TBR than The Name of All Things, if I'm being completely honest with you. I ended up starting this one because at work I needed an ebook. I didn't have anything else to do that day. I didn't have time for an audiobook because I was on the desk and I just needed an ebook and it was on my Kindle Unlimited because I'm reckless and I have no regard for my TBR or my reading or the fact that I'm in the middle of so many books and I could have just picked up another one and finished it or the fact that like four or five of the Kindle Unlimited books that I have on my Kindle right now, I'm in the middle of reading so I could have just chosen one of those. I am truly an absolute mess. Not only my mental health, not only my skin, not only my hair, I really need to go get it done but also my reading. But yeah, I mean, to make this long story short, I started that. I started The Road of Bones and I'm 50% into it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I got 50% in in a day. So it's been going well. I don't actually like the couple in here very much. I don't really like the male love interest. I don't know. There's just nothing about him that's like drawing me to him in any way. I like the female love interest. She's fine. She, Scylla, she's cool, I guess. Like nothing special about her either. Although she has like a mysterious past. I don't know what keeps me reading other than like, I'm very interested in the creatures that are in here because the road of bones is like this dangerous road with a bunch of monstrous creatures. And also the queen is after our main character, Scylla. And we don't really know why, like she potentially has magic. Also this book opened with a character who in theory has no relation to the main character, but she was known in some way to have magic and they stoned her to death. And like you had to throw a stone or you would then get in trouble. And so like we meet Scylla while she has to throw a stone at this woman. And we just know that Scylla potentially has magic. It's not really explained. And we know that her father is adamant that they need to get to a specific town because their safety is on the line, specifically Scylla's safety, and that he has spent his whole life protecting her, but she doesn't know why. And then the age old story happens. Her dad gets murdered in front of her. She gets away. And she's like, okay, well, I need to travel this road of bones. But as I said, the road of bones is very dangerous. So she ends up hiding in this like carriage of this kind of band of mercenaries or a war band is maybe a better name for them. But anyway, they kind of catch her hiding in the carriage and she strikes a deal with them. In return, she says she will help them gain allegiance with this man named Cracky, Cracko, Cracky, Cracky, I think is how you say it. There's a lot of names in here that I'm so sure I'm pronouncing wrong, but I did get the audiobook, So I'm interested to see how badly I've butchered the names and pronunciations of things. So there's like a lot of interesting things happening in here. And I think that's what keeps me going is I'm really interested in how it's gonna end and like what's gonna be revealed to us because not a lot has been revealed to us. But I will say that the perspective shifts, it's very hard to tell when a POV switch happens because the tone and the voice sounds exactly the same. And this is written in third person and there's nothing really distinguishing these characters from one another. I just kind of figured it out 
based on what they're doing and like where they're at. And then, like I said, I'm not very compelled by the romance in here by any means. I don't really think the two main characters have that much chemistry and it's not like this tension that I'm eating up. I think I could probably finish it tonight based on how fast I have been reading it, but more likely I will finish it tomorrow. <laughs> I just finished The Road of Bones. And it's funny, it's one of those situations where kind of halfway through it, I immediately knew what I was gonna rate it upon finishing it. And I was correct, the ending didn't really change anything for me. This is a solid three stars. But I will be honest, I am interested in reading the second one only because this kind of tricks you into believing a few things about the main characters and where the romance is going, et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm like, ooh. I kind of want to know where this leads in the second book. But I also think that this first book had a lot of problems, like with the writing, the structure, pacing. But at the same time, I'm so invested in knowing a specific situation that hopefully is going to play out. All I can say is that a little over halfway through, I started picking up on something. And I don't know if I'm stupid or if it's because I don't read the synopsis of things. So I didn't know that this was where it was going to go, but I was kind of rooting for a specific thing to happen. And now I think that is happening. And I think that is where this story is going. And so that's also another reason I want to go into the second one. I know I didn't give the best synopsis of the Road of Bones, but honestly, the best that I can give you for it is that we have a main character named Silo. She ends up going on the run after her father is brutally murdered in front of her. And she ends up hopping into the wagon of this war band. And they decide to make an agreement with her where they'll get her through the Road of Bones safely. And in return, she needs to help them get some answers that they need. The queen is after her, but we don't know why. She doesn't know why. She doesn't know why her father and her were targeted. Like, there are so many secrets in this book, and this book really relies on secrets being kept because the ending, it's like reveal after reveal after reveal. But surprisingly, that wasn't as exciting for me as I thought it was gonna be. But I think that goes back to my investment in these characters and also the relationship that's playing out. And honestly, there were a lot of parts about that relationship that really bothered me, especially the spicy scenes. Like, if you were looking for fun times spicy scenes these were not fun these actually to me read in ways very problematic so like i said yesterday i didn't really like the love interests like i didn't feel like they had any chemistry and that continues to be the truth for me <laughs> the entirety of this book but yeah it's one of those situations where this relies heavily on secrets and characters keeping things from each other and being unreliable again because secrets are so heavily emphasized in here i don't really want to give away too much but all I know is it's a three stars, but that never really stops me from moving on with the series because you never know, second books often can be really, really great and they can make or break a series for me. And I'm definitely a second book kind of girl, but the second book is definitely gonna make or break if I wanna even move forward with the rest of the series as well. I think it's gonna be a trilogy and the third book isn't coming out until like later this year. That all being said, I think I'm gonna start a new book and I know that I'm still in the middle of the name of all things, but I've really been feeling <laughs> I've really been feeling a contemporary romance for whatever reason. A small town contemporary romance had just been on my mind. So I was just talking to Christine because she was live for sprints and I think I'm going to start the Bergman Brothers series because I've been wanting to start the series. I read Mistletoe Motive in December and I loved it. And so I was very excited for Only When It's Us, but I'm just a little bit nervous because I know it's Chloe Elise's debut. So I'm trying to go in with lowered expectations, but I think I'm going to start it. The audiobook's on Hoopla. I'm just in for the night. I'm relaxing for the night. I'm off for like five days. I'm so excited. I really needed it. I really needed it. <laughs> 
I don't think you understand. Work is kicking my ass just because it's been emotionally draining. So anyway, I think I need this. We did it. It's the end of the readathon. I finished my last book for this month because I literally cannot look at another book for who knows how long. Who knows how long it's gonna be until I look at another book, probably this evening, if we're being honest. I'll probably read before bed. That being said, I did say I was going to start only when it's us and I started it and I finished it in like, a day and a half. And I really enjoyed this. This is a solid 3.5 stars. It's not quite a four or five stars, even though there was so much in here that hit me personally, because it was very much things that I've experienced in my life. And as I've said time and time again, probably even in this vlog, because I've read quite a bit of romance this month, I just really love when characters are going through healing journeys and all that life throws your way, like the realities of life. And I know that most people read for escapism and I do do that. But for some reason, I also like a little sprinkle of reality. Mainly in my contemporaries. I guess I don't care as much if that happens in fantasy. I think I had mentioned going into reading this that I had read Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lise and I really, really loved it. This one felt very different and I'm just chalking it up to the fact that it is Chloe Lise's debut novel. And so this felt a little bit different. Sometimes the writing felt a little bit cheesy, which is not something I felt in Mistletoe Motive. As a matter of fact, I really liked the writing in Mistletoe Motive. So that's exciting because that shows me that Chloe Lise has really evolved as a writer and I'm excited to continue on in the series because I will absolutely continue on in the Bergman Brothers series because I feel like with all of the romance authors that I have read where I've read multiple books in their series they always do different tropes for different books and obviously different tropes work differently for different people and there are a few books in the series that have tropes I really really love so I'm looking forward to diving into those ones. Also I know Erin said the second book in the series is one of her favorites and that's the one that she started with and she hasn't read this one before so I'm excited to dive into that one. So this is considered a new adult novel and it's considered enemies to lovers. I think we all know that when we say enemies to lovers in a contemporary romance it's never going to be what you're thinking but the two characters Ryder and Willa actually do have a a little bit of a contentious relationship, but it's very much built on misunderstanding each other. And so I think that was something that bothered me a tiny bit, but I also saw myself in Willa because of what she was going through. She's dealing with a sick parent and she has been like the primary caretaker of her sick parent. This is something that I've experienced as well. And I know that it's very hard to talk about in the moment. So with the misunderstandings, I understand that for her, it's coming from a place of not wanting to talk about what she's experiencing, and I can very much relate to that. But also Ryder has a very similar situation because he developed a disease early on in his life which caused him to go deaf, and he doesn't really talk now. So he uses text communication to talk. So there is a lot of miscommunication in here or like misunderstandings of each other, but I understand that it's also coming from a place of not really wanting to talk about these really intense and emotional things going on in their lives. So like overall, I really do like Willa and Ryder as individual characters. I'm not really sure I was too convinced about their chemistry. Like they clearly had chemistry, like sexual chemistry especially, but I don't know. Like there were moments where I was like, yes, they're very cute and they do have chemistry. And then there were other moments where I was just like, mm, okay, I could take it or leave it. But I think why is primarily my main reason of giving this a 3.5 stars is the writing felt very cheesy at times. Like some of the jokes just did not land for me well. And I don't know, there was just something about the writing that felt off a little bit and it was hard for me to fully immerse myself into the story but the ending really really got me it did get some tears out of me so like i said i'm really excited to read more from chloe lise and see how she grows as an author like i said that was my last book for realmathon and i think this month i read collectively 15 books and this is the stack that i own of what I read. <laughs> Most of this did end up in this vlog, but I did have a couple other vlogs that I was working on over the course of Ramathon where these books ended up in those vlogs. I have one DNF, oh, my bookmark. <laughs> I have one DNF, which was Tempest of Tea, so I did get 50% into it. It does technically count. Also, this is my ghost, Gustav. So collectively, including my DNF, I read 16 books for Realmathon and I logged all of them. The majority of them have people on the cover, 
Like most of these have people on the cover. People, 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 more people. So yeah, pretty much all of these had people on the cover. Most of them weren't read because I weirdly don't own a lot of red books. A couple of the books that I didn't finish, but I did get halfway through is Dune. I did end up getting halfway through Dune and I'm still enjoying it. It just like slowed down so much in the second half, which was very surprising. So I ended up putting it down when Peace Talk started so that I could read quicker books and I just haven't picked it up. But I'm definitely planning to finish it next month and then I did get halfway through The Name of All Things. This is another one where it just is a slower read for me because of how much is going on in The Name of All Things and in the Chorus of Dragon series in general. The first book was like this as well. It took me quite a while to get through. Oh and then I didn't finish Bones to the Wind but I am also halfway through that one. This month was just a lot of ups and downs emotionally, mentally, and like with my reading in general and I think you could see that throughout this vlog. But listen I am very proud of what I did read. Also very proud of my team. So anyway, thank you so much for watching my chaotic monthly vlog. If you have nothing else to say, but you want to leave an emoji, feel free to leave the blood drop emoji down below. And I will talk to y'all next time. Bye friends.